Hey guys, in today's video, I need to repair my arch install. Great. And if this doesn't work, I'm just going to wipe it and start again because I can do that. Uh, let's minimize this. And let's put me in a position where I can get things done. We're going to open up this here. I'm going to type clear. And uh, let me try scroll up. Yeah, typing clear is a lot better than control L, I find. First, we need to edit Grub. Unfortunately, since we're on Fedora 42, we are using Grub. Not my favorite bootloader in the world. One of the most problematic for me, but it is what it is. So let's begin with sudo nano slash etsy slash defaults. And then we'll do Grub. Okay, and on this line right here, uh, I love that it's mentioning Novacore, by the way. That's pretty nifty. We're going to add this command right here. The only issue is we need a space between this and Novacore. So done. So PCI Express underscore ACS underscore override equals multifunction is needed so I can separate my NVMEs, allowing me invert manager to do whatever I need possible. And that's great. So now all we need to do is to update Grub with these new with this new information and we should be good to go. Updating grub is as simple as this command right here, which will automatically do everything that need it, that is needed. Oh, what the hell? Or not. I think I messed up the command. Give me a sec. Let's try that again. Yeah, apparently there's a set issue. Interesting. So my guess is that I screwed up something Yes, I did. My bad. And there we go. Now it's generating. I don't like messing up. Messing up's not fun, but here's the thing. It's not the end of the world. Most people would say, just edit it out. Just edit it out. Why would you edit out the part that makes you human, that shows other people that everyone screws up, even the people that make guides? It makes them feel like they can get things done, that they can fix things, that they can grow. Suck it. I ain't editing out. So what we need to do afterwards is install Vert Manager. Well, what I need to do afterwards is install Vert Manager because I'm not going to be booting into any external ISO. We're going to be using Vert Manager to boot the NVMe that has Arch installed and we're going to repair it from there. Because, I don't know, some part of me thinks this is a good idea. Thankfully, installing the Virtual Manager is easy as... Well, sudo dnf install add virtualization and it grabs everything that you'll need to pull this off. And the best part is activating said virtual manager so that it actually works afterwards is as easy as, well, starting. Or we do this system ctl enable now and then you just put libvirt d okay it's technically the same thing but whatever it does the same thing to make everything work now the virtual manager is working i have to reboot that's the next step rebooting because well we need these new settings applied so i will be right back now that we're back if we go and we look we have vert manager installed actually going to put that right there because I'll be using that. And here's the nifty part. We press this button, it opens, we enter a password, it starts. And we can create a virtual machine for the Arch Linux install. But the main problem is we need to figure out which drive exactly do I have Arch Linux install on, either E16 or E18. And this has always been uh, difficult to figure out. So this is the drives that are both E18 and E16. So I have to figure out which ones are which. And the best and easiest way to do that is by making a new virtual machine. And uh, we're not actually going to be, you know what? Yeah, I, I think I want to use Cache OS to repair the drive. I know that sounds really weird, but it has everything in it that I need to do what I need to do. And we just simply need to boot everything up to make it work. 
Okay, so I'm going to go and I'm going to grab the new Cache OS, ISO, Cache OS, uh, download. You guys know how to download Cache OS, right? It has this thing called Cache Troop, which makes life really easy. And download direct. Hopefully it's going to download pretty quick. It does have really good CDNs, so uh, that's not bad. All right, now that it's downloaded, we're going to close all this out. I'm going to go to Browse. I'm going to add a pool. Okay, as you can see, it's a pool. We're going to name this Downloads. And I'm going to Browse. And it's going to be this right here. And we're going to hit Finish. That way, when we go here, there it is. And we're going to choose this volume. And we're going to just type Arch like that i'm gonna hit forward yes we want to take ownership we want 16 gigs tied to this so i'm gonna do enough to make it fully 16. i'm not going to enable a drive and we are going to customize beforehand we're going to switch this to uefi without secure boot so this one right here should do just fine and hit apply the nick is fine we can leave that we can set this to none Enable OpenGL, hit apply, go to Virtuoso, and Blamo. So, now we need to figure out which drive do we put in. It's always a guess. So there's the E18, and below it somewhere is the E16, or above it, I'm not really sure. Uh, but it's one of these. There it is, see? E16, E18. I always guess this one. But they're both PCI Express 4. So that's the problem. Hmm. Which one do we want to go with? Let's go with E16 just for today and see what happens. So when I hit begin, what I should see is that the 999 gig right there disappears. If I see this disappear, I'll stop the VM immediately. So you know what we're going to do? We are going to move you over here, and let's see what we get. <sighs> Crap baskets. I chose the wrong drive. So we're going to force this off. Okay, I'm going to go here. We're going to remove this, and we're going to choose E18 instead of E16. Finish. We're going to make sure that we have the ISO because it knows to automatically eject it afterwards. We're going to hit apply. We're going to go here and we're going to hit play. That removed the proper drive. All right. Choose Cache OS. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale the display to automatically resize. And then we're going to go full screen. So this should automatically boot in without any issues or any problems since it is the newest ISO. And uh, we're going to repair Lemon. We're going to do Lemon Scan, and that's it. And that should fix it immediately. Hopefully. Ah, with all doubt, in my mind, it should. And if it doesn't, well, that's a Cache OS problem, not a map problem. But I will make it a problem of mine. All right. Lame. Anyway. <laughs> I love how I call out my own BS. Uh, makes life fun. Oh, automatically scaled. Good. That's what a good distro should do. We're not going to be launching the installer. We're going to go for console. I'm going to zoom in. Now, this is my actual install of Arch Linux, okay? It has everything Cache OS does and more, and that makes it very easy to deal with, okay? We're going to go and do Cache OS uh, Troop, or is it Cache Troop? I think it's just cachy. Yes, so it is. And we're going to do sudo at the beginning of that. Now, you can see that I have just this one drive. Okay. We're going to select this one. You want to mount additional drives. Yes. Uh, mount point slash boot. And we're going to select the VFAT. And I'm going to hit no. And there we are. We're in. So if I did Control L and I typed fast fetch, 
you could see that this is my, you know, drive. This is it right here. And we're going to do sudo lemon <laughs> scan. No boot entries found. Damn. Do we do have the boot. CD boot. We're going to do ls. So you can see it's in there. All right, let's do sudo lemon or sorry, lemon, lemon, lim, lime, uh, update. Okay, it's updating. Good, good. And then we're going to do lemon scan. No EFI boot entries found again. All right, give me a second. I got to find all the commands for this. Because again, when I double click the tab, it doesn't actually show. Actually, let's try this. Yeah, it doesn't want to. So according to something, my problem might be that my boot entry is missing. Which actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It, it definitely would make a lot of sense. I've never actually prepared a lemon bootloader before, so this is kind of interesting to me. But, uh, does updating it successfully count? Probably not. Maybe it does? Okay, let's do this. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, things seem to be working, and now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to reboot without the ISO, and we're going to see what happens. Uh, and thankfully, I could do it like this. Alright, uh, force off. Great, we go in here. Remove this, we hit apply. Go here, we hit play, and if it works, I should get a boot entry. Next. So I just reinstalled the bootloader and then I did update to fix it. Having a virtual machine that you could pass through main NVMEs or having a secondary install of anything is just a godsend because now my arch is working again and we could just go in and mess around with whatever we want. And this makes me very happy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this very odd yet weird video. Odd and weird? They're the same thing. Stay weird, everybody. Uh, don't forget, if you want to support this channel, you could do so by checking the description below. You'll find ways to donate. And if you appreciate these weird, quirky guides that are somewhat clean and honest and unedited, like, let me know. I do my best to, like, edit with OBS, pause on pause, so on and so forth, and, you know, keep things straightforward as possible. But, yeah, I think I ran through all the steps with you guys today and how I did what I did, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, because... Yeah, you can use Cache OS to prepare your Arch Vanilla install. That's really cool. Plus, Cache OS just has a better true, you know, tool. Bye. Like, subscribe, comment.